The story of Noah and the Great Flood is one of the most iconic and teaching latent narratives in the Bible, highlighting values such as faith, obedience, and divine justice. This narrative not only recounts how Noah saved his family and a pair of every animal species from the flood sent by God, but also includes an intriguing and often misinterpreted episode, the curse of Canaan, Noah's grandson, instead of his son Ham. To deeply understand this event, it is essential to delve into the complexities of biblical stories, where themes like good and evil, family dynamics, and the customs of the time intertwine. Before the flood, the world was an exceedingly corrupt place, characterized by wickedness and violence among people. The Bible describes this state in Genesis 6 5, where it is stated that the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Noah, however, was the exception, a just and good man, striving to live correctly before God and his fellow humans. Discontent with the direction humanity had taken, God decided to send a great flood to purify the earth. But seeing the righteousness of Noah, he chose to save him and his family. God revealed his plan to Noah and gave him specific instructions, to build an enormous and sturdy ark to save himself along with his wife, his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, their wives, and two of every animal species. Noah, showing unwavering faith and trust in God, complied with this monumental task, as described in Genesis 6.22. After the cessation of the rains and the receding of the waters, Noah and his family along with the animals, left the ark. As a sign of his promise never to flood the earth again, God placed a rainbow in the sky. Noah and his family built an altar to thank God, who blessed them saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, Genesis 9.1. This passage marks the beginning of a new era for humanity, with Noah and his sons as the progenitors of future nations. However, in this new beginning, an incident occurred that would deeply mark Noah's family. After planting a vineyard and making wine, Noah became drunk and was exposed in his tent, as narrated in Genesis 9 20 and 21. This seemingly minor event would trigger a series of events culminating in the curse of Canaan. Ham, the father of Canaan, found Noah in this vulnerable state, and instead of covering him or respecting his privacy, shared what he saw with his brothers. Shem and Japheth, showing respect for their father, covered his nakedness without looking. Ham's reaction to Noah's situation revealed a lack of respect and consideration, not only towards his father but also towards the authority and dignity that Noah represented. The curse of Canaan, the son of Ham, instead of Ham himself, has been the subject of various interpretations. Some scholars suggest that the curse fell upon Canaan as a way to show the consequences of Ham's actions on future generations, a recurring idea in the biblical narrative where the acts of one generation affect the next. Others see in this act a symbolic prefiguration of future events that would unfold in the biblical stories. In summary, this episode in Noah's life is not just a story about a curse, it is a lesson about respect, dignity, and how our actions can have a profound and lasting impact, not only in our lives but also in the lives of those around us and future generations. Ham, upon discovering his father Noah in a state of drunkenness and naked in his tent, chose not to assist him. Instead, he went out to tell his brothers Shem and Japheth what he had seen. Ham's action contrasts sharply with the attitude of his brothers, who upon learning of the situation, decided to act with respect and dignity towards their father. This difference in the brothers' reaction is fundamental to understanding the subsequent events. When Noah awoke from his drunkenness and learned what had happened, he felt deeply hurt and angry at his youngest son's behavior. In response, Noah cursed Canaan, saying he would be a servant of servants to his brothers. Moreover, Noah blessed the Lord, the God of Shem, and asked that Japheth be enlarged and dwell in the tents of Shem, with Canaan as his servant. This passage is found in Genesis 9.25-27, where Noah says, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. The curse of Canaan instead of Ham has generated much discussion and theorization. Some speculate that Canaan may have been involved in some way in the incident, although the Bible does not explicitly detail this. Others see in the curse a prophetic revelation of the future destiny of Canaan's descendants. 
the gravity of the curse is such that it anticipates the future servitudes and struggles that Canaan's descendants would face. The Bible does not provide many details about the immediate consequences for Ham following this incident. However, the focus shifts to the descendants of Noah's sons, particularly how the curse on Canaan would affect his lineage. Canaan becomes the ancestor of the Canaanites, a group of people who according to the Bible, would play a significant role in future events, especially in conflicts with the Israelites, descendants of Shem. This narrative is also fundamental to understanding some of the historical and cultural conflicts described in the Bible. In biblical times, seeing someone's nakedness had important cultural and moral implications. It was not just a physical matter but also symbolic, representing a person's honor and dignity. In the Bible, uncovering nakedness is often associated with dishonorable action, as mentioned in Leviticus 18:7-9 and 2017, where such actions are severely condemned. Ham's decision to inform his brothers about Noah's state was inappropriate and humiliating. This lack of respect toward his father not only demonstrates Ham's disregard for his father but also reveals a deep moral and ethical disconnection in his character. The story of Ham and Noah teaches us an important lesson about parenthood and the impact parents can have on their children. Although Noah was a righteous man and the most worthy of his time, this did not automatically guarantee that his children would share his virtues or weaknesses. This account reflects the complexity of family relationships and how, despite parents' best efforts, children can take very different paths. The relationship between parents and children is a complex and multifaceted theme, extending far beyond the simple connection of blood. There are parents who are figures of kindness and gentleness, models of virtue, yet their children may turn out to be individuals of questionable character. Conversely, there are parents whose actions leave much to be desired, but their descendants surprisingly become exceptional individuals, kind and just. This reality teaches us that being a good-hearted person is not synonymous with being an exemplary parent. A clear example of this is the story of Noah, a man of unparalleled virtues according to the scriptures, but who had a son who did not follow his virtuous steps. In today's world, many parents, even the most educated and prepared, embrace the belief that love is the only necessary ingredient to raise a healthy and successful child. However, this perspective omits a crucial aspect, the importance of imposing expectations and limits. If a child is only given love but not challenged or taught responsibilities, there is a significant risk of growing up developing a sense of selfishness and lack of empathy towards others. The Sacred Bible offers a sincere look at family dynamics, showing examples of what we would now call dysfunctional families. Every family mentioned in the book of Genesis for example, reflects some aspect of this dysfunction. This is a comfort to those struggling with family dysfunction today, reminding them that even the most righteous and respected figures have faced similar challenges. The story of Noah illustrates this clearly, despite being the most righteous man of his time, one of his sons did not live up to expectations. This episode shows how blessings and curses can have a lasting and profound impact. Blessings and curses in the Bible are not mere words, they are imbued with a possibly divine supernatural power that can significantly influence the course of human life. It is surprising to discover that the word curse appears almost 200 times in the Bible, underscoring the importance of this concept. From the beginning of Genesis, we see how Almighty God pronounces curses, starting with the serpent in the Garden of Eden. These events are not random, they operate according to eternal and immutable laws that can be understood through a detailed study of the Bible. In Proverbs 26 2, Solomon explains the nature of curses, like a sparrow in its flitting, like a swallow in its flying, so a curse without cause does not alight. This verse illustrates that curses do not occur without reason, and their effect often transcends the individual, affecting entire families, tribes, societies, and even nations. A classic example is the story of Cain, whose actions affected not only him but also had repercussions on his descendants. Furthermore, once a blessing or curse is pronounced, its influence can endure for generations, manifesting in patterns of behavior and recurring situations that are often difficult to explain solely through personal experiences. These generational curses mentioned in various places in the Bible reveal the existence of an invisible realm, forces that shape history and determine human destiny. 
human history is best understood when we consider both visible and invisible realities, recognizing that our lives are influenced by a complex interaction of these two dimensions. In the visible realm, where we live and experience daily reality, we are surrounded by the material universe, composed of objects and events that we can see, touch, and measure. Though we feel comfortable in this environment and often believe to have some control over it, there are many events that elude our comprehension and manipulation. This visible reality is by its nature, transient and impermanent, and while most people focus on it, the Bible invites us to explore and understand a realm beyond the material, the spiritual or supernatural realm. According to the Bible, in this supernatural realm reside spiritual forces that constantly and decisively influence events in the material world. In 2 Corinthians 4 17 and 18, Paul reminds us that the light and momentary troubles of the present prepare us for an eternal and transcendent glory. This passage teaches us to focus our attention not only on what is visible and temporary but on what is invisible and eternal. The deeper and more enduring reality lies in the invisible domain, where spiritual forces, including blessings and curses, play a crucial role in shaping our destiny. In everyday life, success and fulfillment do not depend solely on our actions in the visible realm but also on our ability to understand and relate to the invisible. Both blessings and curses belong to this spiritual realm and possess supernatural power. Blessings bring positive and beneficial results, while curses tend to have negative and harmful effects. The Bible emphasizes the importance of these two realities mentioning the words blessings and curses more than 640 times. It also highlights the power of words, which can be vehicles for blessings and curses, whether spoken, written, or even thought. Proverbs 11.9 illustrates the potency of words, with his mouth the wicked destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge and discernment the righteous are delivered. This verse warns us about the impact our words can have, for both good and evil. The story of Ham's curse, which actually fell upon Canaan, highlights the importance of respect, especially towards parents. In the Ten Commandments, we find the precept to honor your father and mother, Exodus 20:12, being the first commandment with an associated promise, do what is right, and it will go well with you in life. Even in situations where our parents may not be worthy of honor, we are urged to respect them. Jesus taught us to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us, Matthew 5:45, reflecting the importance of this respect. Showing reverence towards parents is crucial for maintaining social peace and well-being. Ephesians 6 2 reaffirms this mandate, emphasizing that honoring parents is essential for a long and prosperous life. It is important to recognize that our actions have consequences, not only for ourselves but also for others. Ham's disrespect towards his father Noah had negative effects that extended beyond his individual life. Noah's response was to curse Ham's son, a curse that affected future generations. However, with the arrival of Jesus Christ, this dynamic changes. Jesus offers cleansing and redemption to those who believe and follow him, freeing us from the curses of our ancestors. John 1:11 and 12 assures us that all descendants of Shem, Japheth, or Ham, are welcome at God's table. All who believe in Jesus have the right to be called children of God and to partake in eternal salvation. Thus, through faith in Jesus, the curse disappears, opening the way to a blessed and redeemed life. Ham's actions towards Noah can be interpreted as a grave lack of respect and honor towards his father. By not covering Noah, and worse, by divulging his vulnerable state, Ham violated basic principles of dignity and respect. In contrast, Shem and Japheth's response was marked by respect and care, avoiding looking at their father in his state of nakedness and taking steps to cover him, thus preserving his dignity. This narrative reflects the values and social norms of the time, where respect and family honor were of utmost importance. The story of Noah's descendants, especially the relationship between the Israelites, descendants of Shem, and the Canaanites, descendants of Canaan, becomes a crucial backdrop in the biblical narrative. In the books of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy and Joshua, it is described how the Israelites, considering Canaan's land as their God-promised territory, enter into conflict with the Canaanites. The curse pronounced on Canaan could have influenced the negative perception of the Canaanites in these texts, 
leading to numerous battles for control of the land. Regarding Noah's actions, his drunkenness and the consequences that followed are a reminder of the folly of drunkenness. Proverbs 21 warns about the dangers of wine and cider, and how they can affect judgment and perception. Moreover, Proverbs 23 29-33 delves into the risks of drunkenness and its harmful effects. In the face of these stories, it is appropriate to seek a deeper understanding guided by divine wisdom. We pray that God grants us discernment in interpreting these ancient texts, avoiding hasty conclusions or misapplications of their teachings. It is crucial to see the humanity in each biblical character, recognizing their imperfection and their need for God's grace. We ask for guidance in our thoughts and conversations, being cautious in drawing conclusions about curses and blessings, and always remembering that God is a being of love, justice, and redemption. In our efforts to understand the deeper meanings of these stories, it is vital to always keep in mind the central message of God's love and His salvation for all people. May these stories not lead us to judgment or division, but to a deeper understanding of God's mercy and grace, always remembering that despite the complexities of life and human actions, God's redeeming love prevails. In the name of Jesus, Amen. And so, we come to the end of this presentation. Thank you for being part of our channel, a space where we seek to share wisdom and reflections on faith. I send you a warm greeting and a strong embrace. Until next time, and may God bless you.